I'd like to welcome each one of you to our devotional study today. We've been looking at the judgments of God, the plagues that have been poured out upon Egypt because Pharaoh refused to let God's people go from bondage in Egypt. Today we're going to begin looking at the seventh plague that comes upon the land of Egypt, and that is a grievous hail. And uh, we're going to look once again at the fact that God is a God that is merciful, he's gracious, because before God sends the plague on Egypt, just like he has every other time and he's going to continue to do, God issues a warning to Pharaoh. And he tells Pharaoh, Pharaoh, this is my requirement, this is my demand, and if you do not meet my demand, if you do not do what he is, that I'm telling you to do, then this is what's going to happen to you and to your people. And we've seen that over and over again uh, as we move through these verses. Let's read about this hail today in Exodus chapter 9, verses 13 through 21. It says, The Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there's none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go. Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. Sing therefore now, and gather thy cattle, and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field, and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them, and they shall die." He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. So we see, first of all, the demand of God. And God also issues a warning with this demand. Notice, first of all, the demand in verse 13. It says, the Lord said unto Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. So here we see that Moses gets a command from God. He gets his orders from headquarters as it was as to what he is that he needs to be involved in doing. And he says to him, he says, uh, uh, Moses, I want you to get up early in the morning and I want you to go to Pharaoh. And this is when many times God sends Moses unto Pharaoh is early in the morning. And he says, as you go, I want you to stand before him, and this is what I want you to say. Now, keep in mind, all the way down, before we look at what he wants him to say, all the way down through these previous six plagues that we've seen, that every single plague has not just been a judgment that God's brought upon the land of, e of Egypt, it has also been a judgment upon one of the Egyptian gods. Every single one of these plagues have shown that the God of the Hebrews is superior to <coughs> these fake gods of the Egyptians. And once again, he says in verse 13, this is what I want you to say, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews. And of course, we could do some studying here and understand that the word Lord there is Jehovah and all of that, and that he's a self-existent one, that he is all-powerful, and you can learn some wonderful things about God by the name of God that's used here in these passages. But he says to me, he says, I want you to know once again, Pharaoh, that the one that you're messing with is not Moses, and it's not Aaron, and it's not the people of Israel. It is the God of the Israelites. It's the God of heaven, Pharaoh, that you're messing with. And then notice, here's the demand. Let my people go that they may serve me. We've heard that before, have we not? Let my people go that they may serve me. Every time, I believe, without exception, that Moses has stood before Pharaoh to announce 
that a plague is coming. The message has been the same at the beginning. The God of the Hebrews has said, let my people go that they may serve me. So not only was God's uh, demand the same, but I want you to know this God's purpose was the same. And friends, God's purpose never changes. God just didn't simply want the people of Israel to go out of Egypt so that they could wander through a wilderness. No, no, friends. We're going to see as we move through this book of Exodus that the Lord brought them out that he might bring them in. He brought them out of Egypt that he might bring them into the promised land. And friends, that's a wonderful picture of the simple truth that God brought us out of our seeing, that he might bring us into what it is that he has for us. He might bring us into a relationship with him and the blessings of God upon our life as we follow him. And here we see once again that there is a salvation that has a future purpose. And friends, salvation always has a future purpose. And here we see that God desired to save the people of Israel out of Egypt so that they could serve him. Let my people go, that's the demand, and here's the purpose, that they may serve me. God's got a glorious purpose in everything. And God's got a glorious purpose in this. And he gives a little bit more insight, and we'll probably not even get through all of this today, but he gives us a little bit more insight, friends, into what his purpose is. You say, why in the world did, did they go through all that they went through? Couldn't God have just ultimately some way delivered the nation of Israel without going through these plagues? Yeah, he could have, because he's God. He can do anything. But he had a purpose behind the plague. Let's notice part of that purpose in the time that we've got left today in verse 14. He says, For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people. He said, listen, these plagues are being sent upon you, upon your servants, upon your people, upon your cattle. Here's a purpose. That thou mayest know that there's none like me in all the earth. Pharaoh, you've not messed with a God like the God of heaven. All the other gods that you've messed with are false gods. They are fake gods. But God says to Pharaoh, he said, listen, when I'm done with you, you will know that there's none like me in all the earth. There is no God like Jehovah. Friend, what a wonderful reminder to us. Sometimes we go through difficulties in life. We go through difficulties for a multitude of reasons. Sometimes we go through difficulties because of our own stupidity. We do things that are stupid and because of that, it brings difficulties and it brings hardship into our life. It's the consequences of decisions that we make that are, not, that are not smart. Sometimes we go through difficulties because there's sin or something in our life and God is using the difficulty to remove impurity. And sometimes it's not sin. Sometimes it's just something that's keeping us from getting as close to God as we need to be, and God turns up the heat in our life so that he can remove the impurities. But friends, sometimes we go through difficulties, not because God wants to teach us something about ourselves, but we go through difficulties because God wants to teach us something about himself. Stop and think about it, friends. A lot of the things that you know about God that are deep set convictions in your life are things that you believe and things that you know because the God of heaven brought you through some things. And in those things, in those difficulties, in those moments, you learned some truths about God that you would not have learned anywhere else. And you came out understanding once again and reminding of the simple truth that there is no God like the God of heaven that he is all-powerful, he is sovereign, he has all things under his control. And friend, he never does anything without having a purpose behind what he's doing. So, so maybe the good question for you to ask the next time that you're going through difficult waters is not, God, what are you, uh, what are you doing to me? But rather, God, what are you trying to teach me? And friends, that's an important lesson for us to know and for us to understand. Have a great day.